Hello and welcome. I'm Julie Fogel, the Marketing Director at CarryWorks, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, Simplify the Complex, Manage and Report on the Complete Provider Contract Lifecycle. Now, while there's a number of contract management solutions out there today, most are not well suited for health plans to use with their provider networks, because in addition to the individual provider contract, a health plan contracts with that provider's physician group and related practices, and it also contracts with the hospitals and other healthcare organizations within the payer delivery network where that provider has privileges. And they need to be able to manage and report on each different layer. So to address the complexity that this type of hierarchy creates, KiriWorks developed the network development contracting solution that we'll discuss today. You'll hear us refer to it as NDC. Before I introduce today's presenters, a few quick housekeeping items. We've muted the attendees' microphones, but we do wanna make sure you're able to engage with us. So please do utilize the chat box feature to drop questions on the topic or share a struggle or experience. We'll be monitoring those throughout the session. We are recording today's webinar and we will share a link to the session for you to revisit later or share with colleagues. Now it's my pleasure to introduce today's speakers. For the past six years, Dan Smith has been serving as KiriWorks Senior Sales Engineer. He's been putting to use more than those, uh, more than 17 years of experience that he has implementing OnBase and KiriWorks solutions in the payer provider space. John Swisher first joined KiriWorks as a Senior Sales Engineer in 2014. He held various roles within the organization before becoming KiriWorks Vice President of Sales and Product in December of 2020. Let's get started. Thanks, Julie. And, and one, one more housekeeping item. I, I know you mentioned it, but again, you heard Julie say, if you hear Dan or I say NDC, again, that's just our shorthand for, as we said, network development and contracting, which is the solution we're, we're reviewing today. So let me begin by saying, those of you not familiar, you know, we at CareWorks for ages have had a contract management tool that's built universally to handle pretty much any organization's vendor contracts, right? So what did we do with that? We, we took that solution, we tore it apart and developed a provider contracting solution that again, we call NDC. But I, I wanna stop and quickly highlight another couple definitions, descriptions in this webinar. Dan, can you quickly walk through what we define as a provider or, or an entity? You bet. Yeah, so uh, as you know, a provider, the definition of a provider is uh, someone or something that provides a service. So in healthcare, you know, we're really talking about medical doctors at a private practice. Um, it could even be Uber, you know, driving patients around. Uh, sure. It could be a health system. Um, it could be, you know, a provider that is part of a health system that owns their own private practice or a physician group. So within our solution, uh, we relate that up to uh, what we call entities. So a, a provider, a practice, a physical building uh, would be all related up to that entity. Uh, so if you haven't put together, um, really we're using relationships on the back end to relate uh, what we call providers uh, all up through that entity um, definition within the contract. So, you know, as renewals come up, we know exactly um, when to work that and how it's, how it needs to be worked. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, the complexity when you think about a, a provider contract being, it could be, at any level of what we would call entity and then how necessarily that entity may also have additional contracts related to them. And then just because of that, you know, you start entering a world that, you know, vendor contracting solutions just can't handle, right? So going back to it, you know, NDC, is an end-to-end -end solution built specifically to, to process complex provider contracts. And it includes a built-in recruitment and onboarding modules. And 
let me again let me again stop uh, real quick. If if this is your first CareWorks webinar or your first webinar on NDC and, and you want to get a better overview of the solution, be sure to visit our website at careworks.com for those additional resources. Um, all right, so we're here to talk about reporting, which for me personally is my favorite topic because what it allows you to do in a very easy way is take any amount of data, customize, interact with it um, to get actionable results um, and information. So if we if we look at what's on the screen, I think a decent amount of us have one of one of these on, right? I would assume most of us, if, even if we don't have one on right now, we know what this is, right? And it it doesn't matter the device. The, the fact that most folks have a smartwatch means one thing. Well, we're probably addicted to Apple products, but we also love data, right? So me personally, I went with the Fitbit for sleep tracking. I know one individual on our sales team has a, a Garmin for their Ironman training. I have a couple of friends who have Garmins. They say for the same thing, but I know it's for golf. Um, I know Dan doesn't need one because he carried our team in the CareWorks golf outing. What uh, what smartwatch do you have, Dan, again? Um, I have the latest Apple Watch. Um, and really, I, I got that one because of the... Uh, the tracking of heart rate and um, just, you know, general overall health and fitness. Perfect. So the data, yeah, I wanted to, to analyze my sleep. Um, so did I get actionable data? Yeah, I, I think I did. Um, so back to the data, um, you know, these things can track everything, right? Likely more than you want them to. But what do we do with all of that data? You know, well, most come with some type of companion app that crunches all of that data and provides you, provides it to you in a way that you know is easy to understand, make decisions upon. To Dan's point, you know, all, all of the fitness aspects of the Apple Watch here. So why? Why are we here? It's it's all for the same reason. We're talking about measuring data, and in this case. The provider contracting life cycle right and and just like any business process we need insight into it the ability to identify bottlenecks process efficiency opportunities uh, the potential need for additional staff again the, the possibilities are, are endless and unless you have you know a system to manage that you cannot ever expect to get any process improvement, right? It, it, you, if you cannot measure, you cannot improve. So um, Dan and I wanted to bring two real life scenarios uh, to this webinar that we've seen. Um, Dan, I'm sure you could probably think of hundreds, but um, what, what are two very common scenarios every organization faces that, that you've wanted to highlight here? And while you're, yeah. while you're doing that, I'm going to switch over to my demonstration. I think every call with uh, customers, prospects, um, it all comes down to um, turnaround time. You know, how fast are their workers working, uh, completing cases, completing contracts, um, and also performance around that as well. And the, the second one being uh, understanding what work do we have to expect from a renewal standpoint versus what uh, we have to expect from an inventory year over year. So how can we predict the growth? You know, if we need to hire more people, if we need to reallocate users to do more high priority work, uh, gathering all that data. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I love those. And I mean, even outside of, you know, what we would define as provider contracting, I, I would say those, those still apply, but, you know, when we think about the complexities of the data and the contract, the fact that that contract may need to make multiple stops in what we call queues or statuses, 
um, and being able to effectively measure that becomes extremely important, especially if we're looking to uh, enhance that process, take on additional work, try and you know let our bosses know that we need additional staff. So what I have on the screen here, I'm gonna jump to our, our contracts overview dashboard. And, and the ones I'm gonna show over here come with the product right out of the box. But you know, Dan talked about turnaround time and performance. So what you see here is uh, just a general inventory. And right here, we can see, you know, what's our recruiter workload? I mean, you see here, it looks like Zach, he's about two under what we wanna see our normal threshold. And rightfully so, you know, John Dan here are, are crushing it there. They have, you know, 18 and four over what we would expect to be their normal, normal threshold. Now, what do we have upcoming, right? So if we look at contracts upcoming, we can look at future quarters, Q4 2023, and that's gonna give us an idea of any contracts that we need to take a look at, prep for, and we'll get reminders as we approach those at either you know, 30, 60, 90 day preset intervals or a time, time interval that you, you define. You know, if we back this up and we want to look at uh, maybe just John specifically, what we can do is uncheck all of our recruiters, check on John and look at their specific contracts. Now, you may also be saying, all right, th this is uh, pretty good, but you're not actually giving me performance on, on my team. Well, if we move to the individual performance dashboard, that is going to give you that additional insight into your team. So quick walkthrough of this, but we have our, our team members on the left. We have everyone in here. We have our overall late count for our historic, historical volume here versus our total. So we're at about 12% uh, of them missing our internal SLA, which we're defining as, as late, right? Um, these two individual, what we call, um, thresholds will update as I click through any of the team. And then you can always use this to compare those individuals against the team on average. The bottom and top graph are actually identical, um, but the bottom, bottom portion will actually stay static as we click through the team. So if we wanted to look at um, maybe Edie here, and let me actually uncheck all and check on maybe just, uh, let's do Maryland, for example. We can see really here over month over month what their incoming case count was, what their average turnaround time on each one of these, and we're calling them cases and, or contracts, what their max turnaround time, what their minimum turnaround time was, what their goal was, and you can see that with that green line here, right? So that's kind of our goal. And our, our average is actually hovering over what our goal is. So Maryland, maybe not performing as good as we would like. And we can see compared to the team, she's she's taken about a little over 6% more time than, than the team as a whole. And she's on, on 10 out of 76. That's about a little higher than 12%. So on average, you know, she's not necessarily performing up to the standard we want. And we can use this as a measurement time over time to even look at Marilyn's future time if we wanna set up any type of performance plan for her. Now, I probably got a little bit too deep, but going back to Dan's previous previous two questions, you know, we talk about the, the individual contracts and what's upcoming. Again, being able to identify when contracts are approaching expiration and get those automated reminders is a crucial portion of this, especially when we look at um, evergreen contracts, right? Or contracts that we potentially want to end. And if we don't do them within a certain amount of time, they'll auto renew. And then there we are stuck again, tied to a potential provider we don't wanna work with anymore um, in a contract that was set up to auto renew. Now, I wanna take a couple more minutes and walk through the remaining dashboards because that's what we're, we're here to talk about today, right? So if we look at that first dashboard I had up and that's the, the contract timeline, 
this is an overall picture, 30,000 foot view of our contract process. And what this is doing is it's giving us our total stops at each one of the queues here on the, on the right side, the average amount of time spent in those queues. And we can put those goal thresholds in there based off of your organization's expectations and your team size, things like that. And then in the top right, you know, we're getting an idea of the average time spent in that queue uh, using that, that kind of glowing bubble and then that maximum amount of time. So we can see, you know, from an, from an average speed, from an average amount of time in queue, we're doing well, but a couple of these, it looks like, hey, that may have thrown our average off a little bit. That may be the reason why uh, our, our timing looks a little bit off. And then if we wanted to click into any contracts individually, we have their exact history, and each one of these is built into that contract object. So at any time, if you're doing any post-investigation work or you just want to see the progress as one from a manager, you can go into that individual contract or this dashboard and get an idea of where the time was spent visually. Um, the last two I want to talk about quickly is, you know, we were on the individual dashboard earlier that gave us an idea of those turnaround times, right? That that team performance. What do we want to measure from an overall team perspective over a set period of time? So this is a newer dashboard uh, recently added to the solution. But what this provides you again is that exploded view from all of your team to be able to compare against month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year. But additionally predict based off of your case count when you will potentially need additional staff or if we're taking on new business, how much staff do we additionally need based off of that historical volume and our average processing time. Additionally, and, and one thing I, you know, I don't want to harp on too much, but is just an easy availability to be able to distinguish what ones are missing, what objects, what contracts, activities are missing our internal SLAs. And this is a really easy way for, for management to report on this and focus on potential problem areas that, um, you know, without a reporting tool may go unnoticed or unidentified and are just ultimately easy, harder to fix then. And lastly, I want to talk about our project dashboards. We spent a lot of time talking about the contracts themselves, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, this the, our, our NDC contracting solution comes with both a recruitment and an onboarding solution aspect built right in. And from an onboarding perspective, what do we mean? You know, well, anytime we're we're bringing on any provider or payer or contract, there's, there's obviously things we need to do and whether that means getting that person access to um, uh, building set up in HR, set up with accounting, what that system will do is take that type of provider, that type of entity, right, and shoot off various tasks to the various departments within the organization for them to complete that onboarding process. And if you choose to use the recruitment aspect of ours, we have a, a concept of what we call projects. So if you have a recruitment effort, um, we would call that a project and whether it's something like, um, you know, expansion in Northeast Ohio or Utah expansion or taking on a new line of business or looking for additional providers with a certain specialty. Um, what we can do is identify all of those providers, group them into what we call a project, market to them, recruit to them, through that project and then follow up individually and then potentially move forward and create that, what we call a recruitment object into a provider contract. Again, where we're then managing that contract beginning to end um, and through the renewal process. So what are we, what are we getting at? Uh, as payers, it's it's about keeping your members happy, right? So how can we indirectly help them? It's, it's by getting these providers in network as soon as possible with minimal friction to the provider, right? So not only do you have provider contracting as the main solution, but again, you also have recruitment 
and then that onboarding aspect after the provider has been successfully contracted. So not to mention, oh, yeah, not to mention the uh, renewal reminders, workflows, and of course, as we highlighted today, the, the dashboards. Um, Dan, I wasn't, I did a bad job looking for questions as, as we were going. I'm always terrible at that. Did, did any come through? I apologize. There was a couple. Um, I had a couple too. I could answer them also. But uh, while you're giving that uh, demonstration, those, you know, I love the graphical reports. It looked great. Um, those were kind of a, an overall manager view. Um, if we wanted to, uh, you know, drill down and put those into an individual view, uh, could we do that? Yeah, and I think if if I'm understanding the question correctly, and I, I think I am, you're the person asking is almost asking as as a as a work queue, right? So that's where that person would come to get their work, whether they be the the contracts themselves or activities or items that need to be performed on that, right? Yep, I, I would assume. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, a very good use case. And in fact, our, our appeals and grievances solution does just that. So, you know, that brings up a good point. And I'm glad that question was asked because I, I skipped right over it. And one of the things we didn't get into was configurability, right, Dan? So, you know, I, I am not a, a SQL expert. I am not a... Um, a coder, um, neither is Dan. And, uh, you know, where a lot of these dashboards began as as sales tools, right? They began something that, that Dan and I developed and then our, our team has since productized, but they truly are point and click configurable, which is an excellent feature because, you know, at a lot of organizations utilizing these, you know, we'll come back six, nine months later and what started with five dashboards, there's now 25 and it's grown, uh, it's used throughout the organization and they, they've created all of them themselves, just simply copying and 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 modifying. So um, I'm glad that question was asked. And, and a second aspect to that is that you can open objects right from there. It's something I, I skipped over quickly, but you can open up your workload directly from anytime you see one of those Excel type spreadsheets um, uh, type feel at, at the bottom of, of the dashboard. So get right to your work um, directly. And, and the last point within that is, you know, you, you notice all of that was done within just a, a normal web browser, right? So uh, the entire solution is is web-based and uh, as, as a new added feature, you can actually configure your dashboards right from a browser as well. You don't even need a, an admin client anymore. So uh, an awesome new, new enhancement. Um, I'll stop rambling, Dan. Were there any more? You, I think you said there were two. Uh, yeah, the other one was uh, how easily can I combine this data with our existing performance metric apps? And uh, I could take that one. Um, Go for it. Yeah. So there, there's really two ways we could go about doing this. If if you like working in the NDC reporting dashboards, we can ingest that external data and match it up with the data we have, um, or vice versa. We can easily set up a scheduled report every night to output data from NDC uh, to that that BI application. So it it really depends on how you want to go about doing that. But yes, we definitely can. Yeah, it's a, that's a, a good question and a, and a good point because, you know, we, we touch very quickly on, on the complexity of provider data and, and how we've attached that to uh, a, a flexible contracting process, right? And one of the things we don't get into when we talk about reporting is the, the provider entity object itself, right? So we can be your source of truth or we can integrate with, with your source of truth. And in the case where we are integrating with the, your source of truth, you still get all of those same dashboards. You still get all of that same provider complexity, um, but we're simply utilizing your data um, and integrating it with our, our own. So you get a seamless dashboard as, as, as your end product. 
Yeah, I know in a, in a previous life, I actually integrated uh, data from Kronos, so time and attendance data and corresponding with uh, document management. So it's definitely uh, doable. And, you know, if you could pull all that data into one central location, it's a world of knowledge. Yeah, and you don't even yeah you don't even need to actually pull it in. You can access it remotely and just view it all together. Great point, Dan. Um, well, if that's I think that's it for the questions. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I would like to thank Julie for our, our generous introduction. Um, Dan, your valuable insights. Uh, and, and most importantly, everyone in attendance uh, in your questions. Um, Julie, I'll, I'll turn it to you. Yeah, I just was going to say this brings us to the end of the session. Um, and I would also like to thank both of you for your insight. Um, and please, uh, folks attending, watch your email. There'll be a link for today's recording, as well as information about upcoming webinars. And on behalf of CuryWorks, I thank each of you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>